This is John W. Whitehead, author of Battlefield America, The War on the American People, bringing you a message about the state of our nation. It has been over 60 years since George Orwell published his novel in 1984. Described as political satire, it is in reality a political prophecy, one that is being fulfilled in our own times. 1984 portrays a global society of total control in which people are not allowed to have thoughts that in any way disagree with the corporate state. There is no personal freedom and advanced technology has become the driving force behind a surveillance driven society. Snitches and cameras are everywhere, and people are subject to the thought police, who deal with anyone guilty of thought crimes. The government, or the party, is headed by Big Brother, who appears on posters everywhere with the words, Big Brother is watching you. Orwell's story revolves around Winston Smith, a member of the outer party. When Winston meets and falls in love with Julia, they begin seeing each other secretly, thus embarking on what is an illegal relationship. They are eventually arrested by the thought police and placed in reprogramming. Much of what Orwell envisioned in his future society has now come to pass. Surveillance cameras are everywhere. The government agents are listening in on our telephone calls and they read our emails. Political correctness, a philosophy that discourages diversity, has become a guiding principle of modern society. The courts have eviscerated, done away with Fourth Amendment protections against unreasonable searches and seizures. In fact, SWAT teams battering down doors without search warrants and FBI agents acting as secret police that investigates dissenting citizens are common occurrences in contemporary America. We are increasingly ruled by multi-corporations wedded to the police state, and much of the population is either hooked on illegal drugs or ones prescribed by doctors. All of this has come about with little more than a whimper from a clueless American populace largely comprised of non-readers and television and internet zombies. But we have been warned about such an ominous future in the novels and movies for years. In fact, films or movies may be the best representation of what we now face as a society and what our society is fulfilling in terms of Orwell's prophecy. The following are 10 of the better films on the topic. Fahrenheit 451 was made in 1966. It's adapted from a Ray Bradbury novel and it's directed by Francis Truffaut. This film depicts a futuristic society in which books are banned and firemen, ironically, are called on to burn contraband books. 451 Fahrenheit being the temperature at which books burn. Montag is a fireman who develops a conscience and begins to question his book burning. The film is an adept metaphor for our obsessively politically correct society where virtually everyone now pre-centers speech. Here, a brainwashed people addicted to television and drugs do very little to resist governmental oppressors. THX 1138 made in 1970. This is a somber view of a dehumanized society totally controlled by a police state. The people are force-fed drugs to keep them passive, and they no longer have names, but only letter or number combinations such as TX 1138. Any citizen who steps out of line is quickly brought into compliance by robotic police equipped with pain prods or electroshock batons. Sound like tasers? Solent Green was made in 1973. It's the future, and in an overpopulated New York City, the people depend on synthetic foods manufactured by the Soylent Corporation. A policeman investigating a murder discovers the grisly truth about what Soylent Green is really made of. The theme is chaos, where the world is ruled by ruthless corporations whose only goal is greed and profit. Blade Runner, made in 1982, is set in 21st century Los Angeles, where a world-weary cop tracks down a handful of renegade replicants or synthetically produced human slaves. Life is now dominated by megacorporations and people sleepwalk along rain-drenched streets. This is a world where human life is cheap and where anyone can be exterminated at the will of the police or Blade Runners. Based upon a Philip K. Dick novel, this exquisite Ridley Scott film questions what it means to be human in an inhuman world. 1984 was made in 1984, the best adaptation of Orwell's dark tale 
This film visualizes the total loss of freedom in a world dominated by technology and its misuse and the crushing inhumanity of an omniscient corporate state. The government controls the masses by controlling their thoughts, altering history, and changing the meanings of words. Winston Smith is a doubter who turns to self-expression through his diary and then begins questioning the ways and methods of Big Brother before being re-educated by O'Brien in a most brutal way. They Live made 1988. John Carpenter's bizarre sci-fi social satire action film assumes the future has already arrived. John Nada is a homeless person who stumbles across a resistance movement and finds a pair of sunglasses that enables him to see the real world around him. What he discovers is a world controlled by ominous beings who bombard the citizenry with subliminal messages such as obey and conform. Carpenter manages to make an effective political point about the underclass, that is, everyone except those in power. The point? We, the prisoners of our devices, are too busy sucking up the entertainment trivia beamed into our brains and beating each other up to start an effective resistance movement. The Matrix made in 1999. The story here centers on a computer programmer, Thomas A. Anderson, secretly a hacker known by the alias Neo, who begins a relentless quest to learn the meaning of the Matrix, cryptic references that appear on his computer. Neo's search leads him to Morpheus, who reveals the truth that the present reality is not what it seems and that Anderson is actually living in the future, or 2199. Humanity is at war against technology, which has taken the form of intelligent beings, and Neo is actually living in the Matrix, an illusionary world that appears to be set in the present in order to keep the humans docile and under control. Neo soon joins Morpheus and his cohorts in a rebellion against the machines that use SWAT team tactics to keep things under control. Minority Report, made in 2002. It's based on a short story by Philip K. Dick. The setting is 2054, where pre-crime, a specialized police unit, apprehends criminals before they can commit the crime. Captain Anderton is the chief of the Washington, D.C. pre-crime force, which uses future visions generated by precogs, mutated humans with precognitive abilities to stop murders. Soon, Anderton becomes the focus of an investigation when the precogs predicts he will commit a crime but the system can be manipulated, as we find out. This film raises the issue of the danger of technology operating autonomously, which will happen eventually if it has not already occurred. To a hammer, all the world looks like a nail. In the same way, to a police state computer, we all look like suspects. In fact, before long, we all may be mere extensions or appendages of the police state, all suspects in a world commandeered by machines. V for Vendetta, made in 2006. This film depicts a society ruled by a corrupt and totalitarian government where everything is run by an abusive secret police. A vigilante named V dons a mask and leads a rebellion against the state. The subtext here is that authoritarian regimes through repression create their own enemies, what they call terrorists, forcing government agents and terrorists into a recurring cycle of violence. And who is caught in the middle? The citizens, of course. This film has a cult following among various underground political groups such as Anonymous, whose members wear the same Guy Fawkes mask as that worn by V. Land of the Blind, made in 2006. This dark political satire is based on several historical incidents in which tyrannical rulers were overthrown by new leaders who proved just as evil as their predecessors. Maximilian II is a demented fascist ruler of a troubled land named Every Country, who has two main interests tormenting his underlings and running his country's movie industry. Citizens who are perceived as questioning the state are sent to re-education camps, where the state's concept of reality is drummed into their heads. Joe, a prison guard, is emotionally moved by the prisoner and renowned author Thorne and eventually joins a coup to remove the sadistic Maximilian, replacing him with Thorne. But soon Joe finds himself the target of the new government. It's definitely time to realize that what we call the government is not what it seems. Unfortunately, most Americans, like animals in a cage, have come to believe that the zookeeper is friendly. And as freedom continues to diminish, we had better wake up or we will become the Winstons of our time. In fact, as Orwell's novel concludes, Winston and Julia are taken to the Ministry of Love as part of their reprogramming process. 
Since Winston fears rats, he is tortured with rats until his feelings for Julia are destroyed. As confirmation that he sees the new reality of the state, Winston writes that 2 plus 2 equals 5. The reprogramming is successful. He's cured. As the final sentence of Orwell's book concludes, he loved Big Brother. Let us hope this is not an epitaph for our times. For more information about the Rutherford Institute, visit us at www.rutherford.org.